So I was finally able to get in a solid two hours with the closed beta for the finals. And the short version is, there's a lot here to be excited about. What's going on everybody? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and welcome back to the channel. Now, in case you haven't yet heard about this one, this is The Finals, a new fast-paced arena-style FPS created by a bunch of ex-DICE devs over at Embark Studios. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of these pseudo low-gravity high-speed shooters, but when you put a bunch of devs that worked on previous Battlefield games into a room, I'm keen to see what they come up with. Embark also has another title, Arc Raiders, which was originally set to release back in 2022, and this one probably connects more for me than the finals does. Now, Arc Raiders, just like its brother, is free to play and built on the Unreal Engine, but will nix the PvP elements in favor of a cooperative action shooter setting. Arc Raiders offers up what looks like an intense, futuristic PvE experience, much like Anthem, but without the flying, pitting humans versus the alien Ark invaders. Now, I mentioned Ark Raiders in this discussion because some of these hyper-low gravity mechanics I saw in the finals seem to also be present in the Ark Raiders trailers, almost as if this game here is being used to thoroughly test out many elements that will arrive later this year in Ark Raiders. Now, at this time, there is no word on the monetization scheme for either of these games, but with them both being free to play, that will be something to keep an eye on. Now, as soon as I dropped in, and by the way, I was able to play on a friend's setup, and I'm still waiting to get in myself, so I'm personally still waiting on that invite email, but one of my first thoughts was this was a smaller, better version of Hyperscape. There's this super vertical element and pacing that really reminds me of that past Ubisoft title, but again, there's much better execution going on here. You've got four teams of three players all zipping around the map, and the first word that comes to mind is f chaos. Yeah, I know that's two words, but the finals is all about that mayhem, baby. Instantly, as a hardcore Battlefield player, you see some of those elements kind of seep into the finals. So the gunplay here is really pretty on point, and I know it's still in beta, but the overall technical state of the game is actually really good, but not without issues, which I'm going to touch on in a moment. During the rounds, you've actually got three different objective types kind of interwoven together and simultaneously happening here. So you've got point attack, point defend, and you've also got escort. So at any given time, you could be blindsided by one of these three other teams as you attempt to cash out. Now the classes are broken out into these three body types, light, medium, and heavy. And Say if you were to play as a heavy, you're going to be super tanky and have a high health pool. Now, I was personally rocking the light class, which was a crazy glass cannon kind of Loki-esque character. So you had this wild fast movement speed. You could actually cloak for invisibility. And then it had this assassin blade that if you could get in the killer blow was a one hit kill. On the flip side, if you tried to heads up, so 1v1 other medium and heavy players, they would normally just liquefy you. Each class has its own complement of weapons and gadgets to go along, so there's this endless stream of options you get to mess around with, and I can see a bunch more customization coming when the game fully launches. Now, since I only put in around two hours, I would still need more time with the game to really nail down some of the issues with the class balancing because there is definitely some balancing that needs to happen here. But it felt to me that, you know, it's not in such a tragic state that it can't be corrected. What really stands out here, besides the torrid pacing and the sheer chaos, is this degree of levolution you have at your disposal. For anyone that's played Battlefield, multiply Battlefield destruction by a thousand percent and you arrive somewhere close to the finals. Everything, and I mean everything, can be blown the f*** up. Which is handled server side, by the way, so even when complete buildings were being shredded to pieces by C4 and RPGs to the point that they collapsed, even then, I wasn't really seeing any massive performance issues here. Which is impressive. The destruction capabilities alone should be enough to attract some of you to this title, because I simply can't do the levels of mayhem you can bring down on the environment in this game enough justice with just words. Maybe you're on a point and trying to defend it, but there's this bridge leading from an adjacent rooftop where enemies could run right at you. No problem, man. 
bring that sucker down. Now, with all this shooting and destruction, you'd be right in assuming that the sound design must be overwhelming, and it is. But I found it decent, it really sounds pretty good, and the sound location is what really worked well for me. I could hear enemies juking around, and as someone that relies on sound, it stood out as a real positive here. But, as with many of these early release titles, I found some game-breaking issues that I'm hopeful the team at Embark can get handled ASAP. Several times in my couple hours of playtime, I saw that my bullets just weren't inflicting any damage at all. I was hitting the targets, but no damage. Call it bullet registration, whatever. I had to log out and back in to try to correct it. There's also an issue with cover and vaulting not really working consistently. One minute you're grabbing onto ledges that are way above your character's head and pulling yourself up. The next minute you can't vault over what feels like a medium-sized object, like a little boulder. There's a real lack of consistency here, and in a game that moves this fast, where you can get deleted this quickly, if you're stuck there trying to grab a ledge or vault and it doesn't work, that just spells sayonara for you and your character. And finally, I saw several times where my left mouse button would not work. I'd line up the shot, press the fire button, and nothing, which is yeah, intensely frustrating. Now these all feel like technical issues that can be sorted out. They could have been server related. I honestly don't know. I'm not skilled with that side of game development, but they need addressing. So overall, the finals was pretty impressive. I didn't touch on it, but the art style and graphics are also well done here. But it was the chaotic mix of objective gameplay, four teams, and hot damn, that level of destruction that seemed to bring something new to the FPS scene. Now, could the finals do some damage to this genre when it finally launches? You know, it may not be my go-to choice for FPS action, as I'm more rooted in the traditional styles like Battlefield, but that being said, I would give the finals more than a fighting chance of carving out a little piece of the FPS action. And if they can keep delivering with new maps, modes, unlocks, and more, this could be a real contender. As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts on the finals. Leave me a comment and I'll do my best to respond. Remember to smash that sub button and ring the notification bell to receive my latest upload alerts. If you could rate and or share this video, it would be greatly appreciated. You can find and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and over in my community Discord server, links to all of which can be found in the video description and pinned comments below. Shout out to the 114,000 of you who have taken the leap and hit that subscribe button. And as always, a huge thanks to the Buzz Battalion over on Patreon. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.